So, one of the Elder High Priests of Status and John McCain no, is going to be writing a new show. memoir. I'm sure it'll be great. I wonder who will write it, though. Does he hire a ghostwriter, or will the brain tumor be doing all the work as usual? So, former President George W. Bush made a reappearance recently, Thursday, October 19th. He has been mostly silent since his presidency, and even during his presidency. I presume he has been cloistered, reading up on philosophy and politics, reflecting on his experience both as a president and a president's son on the campaign trail over half a dozen times. What words of wisdom does this grand elder of statism have to share? Is it for us? that we should look to our common heritage and other things that unite us as a people while we are bombarded with propaganda from both sides trying to divide us? Maybe it's an open letter to God Emperor Trump. Words of encouragement and advice for a fellow Republican president could be something else entirely that will enrich the popular discourse. Either way, I'm sure they're well thought out, researched, and original ideas. Nope. Democracy remains the definition of political legitimacy. <laughs> Political legitimacy. A better oxymoron I have not heard. Some signs that the intensity of support for democracy itself has waned, especially among the young, who never experienced the galvanizing moral clarity of the Cold War, or never focused on the ruin of entire nations by socialist central planning. The fact that democracy needs a cold war, the threat of nuclear annihilation to justify its existence, is really a condemnation of democracy, isn't it? It's part of the reason we meet here today. How do we begin to encourage a new 21st century American consensus on behalf of democratic freedom and free markets? I don't know, Bushy. Why don't you tell us? I've abandoned free market principles to save the free market system. Democratic freedom and free markets. So, in other words, you're full of sh- According to our intelligence services, the Russian government has made a project of turning Americans against each other. This effort is broad, systemic, and stealthy. It's conducted across a range of social media platforms. Say it. We must secure our electoral infrastructure and protect our electoral system from subversion. My Russia! But wait, Bush, didn't you say... Bigotry seems emboldened. Our politics seems more vulnerable to conspiracy theories. We must secure our electoral infrastructure and protect our electoral system from subversion. Conspiracy theories. The Russian government. Conspiracy theories. The Russian government. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> Pick one. Finally, the call to action calls on major institutions of our democracy, public and private, to consciously and urgently attend to the problem of declining trust. For example, our democracy needs a media that is transparent, accurate, and fair. Oh my God, where were those remarks 16 years ago? Better late than never, I guess. Our democracy needs religious institutions that demonstrate integrity and champion civil discourse. Yes, for the love of God, churches, stand for something. Our democracy needs institutions of higher learning that are examples of truth and free expression. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt here. I don't think he has bad intentions. It's entirely possible. I'm reading all this through the lens of my own biases and am looking for things to get outraged about. Yes, he's finally saying what needs to be said. Little did we know that the repressive governments would be undertaking a major effort to encourage division in Western societies and undermine the legitimacy of elections. Then again, I might be also justified. Now then, let's recall something. This is the same George Bush who said nothing while his name was dragged through the mud by a rabid fake news media who did everything they could to possibly mock and malign him at the tail end of his presidency. Bush bashing had become a genre in popular culture. Did he fight back? Did he ever use the bully pulpit of the presidency to correct the media's constant lies or call them out on the dishonesty and bias that was so apparent 10-year-old heretics were doing school projects on mainstream media dishonesty? No. No. Of course he didn't. As a result, we got eight years of President Barack Obama, who gave us such goodies as mandatory health insurance, bank bailouts, stimulus packages, nationalized student loan industry, 
$20 trillion in debt, a continuation of Bush's endless wars, the collapse of stable Middle Eastern countries, and the migrant crisis, worsened race relations, a stagnant economy, and so much more. But I'm sure this wise and reserved elder statesman spoke out against the excesses of the opposing party. Am I right? Yeah, I didn't think so either. What does it take to get the elder statesmen all riled up? What grand atrocity against human liberty must the priest of statism commit to get the grand wise elder Bush to stand up and speak out? God Emperor Trump and his supporters threatening the ability for the Democrats to import Democrat voters through third world immigration. For this one cause, fissures form across the earth. Like a bat out of hell, George Bush rises from the volcanic depths, spewing forth the same multiculturalist dogma we've been hearing for years, before receding back into the infernal depths from whence he came. While Bush didn't mention Trump by name, with comments like, We've seen nationalism distorted into nativism. We've forgotten the dynamism that immigration has always brought to America. And bigotry or white supremacy in any form is blasphemy against the American creed. It's clear what he meant. Hey, blasphemy against the cult of statism? A-OK. It's the same multiculturalist drivel that we've been hearing from the Democrats and Marxists for the past decade, and we're sick and tired of it. Why is he making these statements? Why, after over a decade of silence, was he compelled to speak? Is it a matter of principle? Or was he just butthurt because Trump was mean to Jeb? Ah, the poor little globalist. I'll let you decide. I'll give Bush some credit, though. He's correct not to mention the God Emperor, because this matter is bigger than Trump. Immigration is the sole defining factor of our time on whether we'll live in a free society. Make no mistake, we lose on immigration, we lose the West. If you're even just a little bit skeptical on mass immigration, that masses of people from crappy countries just maybe will bring with them the ideas that turned their home countries crappy, then you should be offended by this speech. Bush is calling you a bigot, someone whose ideas aren't even worth discussing, that he's better than you. Okay, maybe he's not actually saying that, but I thank him for the clarity so that I know where he stands. Let me speak to you directly, former President George W. Bush, Mr. President. What goodwill you still had with me, with others like me, it's gone. It's dead and buried, pushing up daisies and dancing with angels in the streets of heaven. It's sad, really. For the longest time, Mr. President, I defended you. I wanted to believe you were doing the right thing. Nobody who took the kind of hits you took from the media could possibly be that bad. But then I remember what you allowed to have happen during your administration. What you campaigned for. The Patriot Act. No Child Left Behind. Medicare Part D. The botched Iraq and Afghanistan invasions that were based on dubious evidence. And the TARP bailouts. Mr. President. Mr. Bush. George. I just wanted to say, I was right. You weren't nearly as bad as the mainstream media made you out to be. You're freaking worse!